your alarm to wake up before the sermon. If you have your Bibles with me, if you turn with me over to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to look this morning at um, an interaction that Jesus actually had with a veteran. Um, now I really struggled this week to figure out what to share with you this morning because I thought it's only appropriate since we're honoring our veterans to find something in the scriptures where we're talking about where, where it talks about veterans and um, I'll, I'll tell you there are times in your life where you just know that God is speaking to you and there are some times you're like come on God I'm waiting on you and Sunday's coming and you've got to get it together um, and that was that week for me this week um, but I'll, I'll tell you, the majority of what I'm going to share with you is actually from a sermon uh, that Reggie Bazell uh, preached several years ago. Um, and I think that he did an excellent job at capturing um, this interaction that Jesus had with a veteran in Matthew chapter 8. But we do, again, this morning, we've said it a few times, we want to give a huge thanks to all of our veterans and their families for their sacrifice that they were willing to give. Um, and for those of you that served faithfully, we give you a huge thanks. And again, we want to honor you today. Veterans are so deserving of our honor. And we just spent a few moments in this service this morning honoring our veterans. And if we had spent the entire day honoring our veterans, it really would not have been enough because of the honor that they deserve. But veterans are very committed. They committed and went all in in the cause for which they signed up for. A veteran is committed to a number of different things, to the cause of freedom, to the cause of courage, to the cause of the call of their country. And it's this interaction that Jesus really had with this veteran this gentleman that was still serving here in Matthew chapter 8. If you would look with me in Matthew chapter 8, we're going to start reading at verse number 5. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in a terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside, into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. We can read over this passage here in uh, the middle of Matthew chapter 8. And we can almost just forget that Jesus was actually speaking to a Roman soldier, this centurion. Now, at this point in Jesus' ministry, he had already called his first disciples. The scriptures tell us that Jesus had already healed the sick. He had performed many miracles. He had already done a number of different teachings, the Lord's Prayer being one of them. He had talked about healing, and he had turned what seemed like a lot of the Jewish laws upside down with his teachings by this point when Jesus encountered this veteran. One of the great miracles that Jesus did just before this is he healed a man with leprosy, something that was deemed to be unclean in this culture. Something that everyone should stay away from this individual. And then immediately after that, Jesus comes into contact with this guy that's serving in the Roman army. There's two key points that I want to focus on this morning that we'll look at that you can glean from this passage of Scripture. 
The one thing that's very clear is that this centurion took a moment out of his out of his job, out of his duty to honor Christ. If you see here in the beginning of this, it says when Jesus had entered Capernaum in verse five, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in a terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I'll go and heal him. Then the centurion replied, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. The centurion was a, a, a military leader in the Roman army. Now, the word centurion lets us see that he was probably uh, ruling over, or he was probably entrusted with about 100 guys under his authority. A lot of times there weren't enough centurions, and so the centurions that had authority would have quite a few more than 100 underneath them. But here at this point in the centurion's life, he has a problem. There's not been any solutions for this problem. There's been no one that can take care of this problem that he has with one that's under his authority who is suffering and is sick and needs healing. And so the centurion comes to Christ and here at the beginning of his conversation, after he asks for help for his servant, he takes just a moment to honor Christ. In verse 8 he says, I can't have you come under my roof. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. And then in verse 9 the centurion told Jesus about the authority that he did have. He said, I command my own. I tell this one to go and I tell this one to come and they, they do what it is that I tell them to do. What's interesting, if you take a look throughout the New Testament, every time a centurion is mentioned in the New Testament, it's always in a positive or in a favorable light. It's never in a negative light. If you take a look throughout the scriptures, you will find that over and over again. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 54, it says this, When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely this man was the Son of God. If you take a look at Acts chapter 10, in that very, very first verse, we see the first Gentile convert, and that is a centurion whose name was Cornelius. If you take a look at Acts chapter 21, the centurions rescued the Apostle Paul from a mob. The mob in Jerusalem wanted to crucify Paul. They wanted to have him killed. They wanted to have him sentenced to death. But it was the centurions who stepped in and rescued Paul and got him out. In Acts chapter 27, again, the Apostle Paul is on a shipwreck. Lots of prisoners. Paul is one of those prisoners. There was a shipwreck. And then all of the soldiers on this ship decided that the best thing they could do is to kill all of the prisoners. But the centurion in charge of those soldiers stepped up and talked them out of killing the prisoners because they wanted to save the Apostle Paul. Every time you see a centurion mentioned in Scripture, it's always in a positive light. And here in Matthew, we meet yet another centurion who has an encounter with Jesus Christ. The centurion came to Jesus and needed help. And then all of a sudden, we see Jesus have compassion on this centurion, on the problem that this veteran is having. He says, I'll heal him. I'll go to your house. I'll grant your request of me, and I will heal him. But yet it was the centurion who stopped after Jesus had granted, was willing to grant his request and gave honor to Jesus Christ. You know, one thing a true veteran has done over and over in their service and in their duty is to give honor where honor is due. And it's this veteran in Matthew chapter 8 that we can learn from and give honor to the one who deserves the most honor, and that is Jesus Christ. It was by faith that the centurion had come to Jesus Christ. He could have commanded because of his role that Jesus come to him. But instead the centurion went to Jesus by faith. It was by faith that the centurion took a moment after Jesus had agreed to grant his request. By faith the centurion honored Christ. It was by faith that he recognized, the centurion recognized, his own unworthiness when he said, Jesus, 
I'm not worthy for you to come into my. You don't have to come into my house. Just speak the word. This veteran, this centurion, gave honor to Christ. And that's a lesson that we can learn from our veterans. Give honor where honor is due. But begin by giving honor to Jesus Christ. And then if you see what Jesus did in turn, Jesus then gave honor to this veteran. Of course, we can always learn from the example that Christ has given to us. We're told to model Jesus Christ. We're told to act as if, as we are told to act as Jesus acted. And so here, Jesus pauses to give this great military veteran, this centurion, honor. Take a look at verse 10 with me, if you would. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I've not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and in the kingdom of heaven. And then Jesus goes on to talk about that. But here at the beginning, Jesus says, um, I tell you the truth, I've not found anyone in Israel that had a great faith as this, as this centurion. There are only two times in the New Testament that Jesus ever was astonished or marveled at something. Only two times. One is in Mark chapter 6, verse 6, when Jesus marveled at the unbelief of those in Nazareth. The only other time that Jesus marveled or was astonished at anything is with this centurion here. And here we see the centurion was honored by Christ because Christ was astonished. He marveled that Jesus had never found anybody else's faith to be as great as this centurion. So think about what Jesus has done here with this veteran, with this centurion. He honored him. He marveled at his faith. Now think about the things that Jesus had already done up to this point. Jesus had healed a lot of people. He had performed a lot of miracles. A lot. Jesus had already called his first disciples and they were following Jesus. But yet it is Jesus that pauses to honor this centurion to say, I haven't found anybody with the faith that you have. Just think about had you been with Jesus in these days and had you seen somebody who wasn't able to hear or wasn't able to speak, all of a sudden they could do those things. Or someone that wasn't able to walk and all of a sudden they got up and they walked. You'd probably have a lot of faith in Jesus. You would all of a sudden start to believe, hey, you know what? Maybe that Jesus who says he is the Son of God really is the Son of God. But yet if Jesus says this centurion has an uncommon faith, this centurion, Jesus honored by saying, I haven't seen anybody that has the faith that you have, centurion. It was the centurion, this Gentile Roman centurion, this veteran that demonstrated an uncommon faith when he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And he did that by coming to Jesus. Reggie Bazell says, true faith honors Christ and Christ honors true faith. And that's what happened in this passage of scripture. This centurion, this veteran stepped up with his faith and he honored Christ. And then what happened is Christ in turn honored him because of his faith. How did the centurion do that? What was it that the centurion did? The centurion said to Jesus, you don't even have to come to my house. You don't have to be put out by walking all the way to my house. All you have to do is just speak the word. That's the faith that this veteran had here in Matthew chapter 8. He said, Jesus, all you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. Just speak the word. How many times do we today take Christ at his word? The Bible reminds us that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if Christ has performed miracles in the past, and he has, then just today, Christ can perform miracles as he has in the past. 
All we have to do is have the faith of this veteran in Matthew chapter 8 when he says, Jesus, just speak the word and he will be healed. Jesus has told us to ask and it will be given to us. Seek and we will find. Knock and the door will be opened. That is recorded in Matthew. It is true for us today. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is seek. All we have to do is knock. And Christ is willing if we are willing. Jesus then told us all we have to do is to have the faith in the size of a mustard seed. And then we have the power and the authority to say to this mountain, be removed and it will be removed. Jesus gave us that amount of authority. If only we have faith. It's as small as a tiny mustard seed. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these other things will be added unto you. You see, we have to learn from this veteran in Matthew chapter 8. To be able to have this uncommon faith. This faith that takes Jesus at his word. And if Jesus says it, it is true. You've probably heard the song that says, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. It's a good song, it's a catchy song, a popular song, but it's really not accurate. Because if God said it, it's true whether you believe it or not. God doesn't need you to believe in order for His Word to be true. God's Word is already true. And we have to have the faith of this centurion to take God at His Word at what He has said to us. And if we are willing to have faith just like this centurion, this Gentile soldier that was serving in the Roman army, then the things that we have in our hands, according to God's will, are unlimitless. By being able to gather around an altar and pray for healing, all Jesus has to do is speak the word. He doesn't need us to believe. He doesn't have to use us. God can do whatever he desires. All he has to do, all he has to do is speak the word. But we have a duty, just as this veteran did. We have an obligation, just as this veteran did, to believe in our Commander-in-Chief. Christ is our Commander-in-Chief. He's the head of the Christian army. He is first above all of us. And He has the power he holds the authority to say something, and it is our responsibility to fall in line with what our commander, Jesus, has said to all of us. Billy Graham says, true faith sees the invisible. True faith believes the impossible. And true faith receives the incredible from God. Jesus told the centurion, because of your faith, because you believed, my heavenly Father has given me that authority, and because you trusted in me, your servant is healed. That's all Jesus had to do. He just spoke, and the servant was healed. So with Christ as our commander-in-chief, this morning we uh, decided that we were going to honor our veterans with just a small medal. And this medal has a soldier on the front of that who is wearing some armor. And it has a scripture on the very bottom of that that says Ephesians 6, 13 through 17. And the words inscribed on this says, put on the whole armor of God. And we did that this morning as a small, small token of the gesture to our veterans. Thanks for the time that they've served. 
But we did that also as a remembrance of just as those who stood here this morning and others that we know who have served faithfully and putting on the armor that they have been given, we gave them this as a reminder that they also have a separate set of armor to put on, just as each and every one of us does. In the book of Ephesians, we're reminded to put on the full armor of God that God has given to us. But we're also reminded in the first chapter of Ephesians that God placed all things under Jesus' feet. And that verse 22 says, and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church. You see, there Christ is our commander in chief. He is the one that's reigning over all of us. And our duty as Christians, our duty as Christ followers, are to put on the full armor of God that he has given to us. And right after Ephesians 6, we're, we're told to put on the full armor of God that God has given to us. In verse 12, we're reminded by Paul that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In 1 Peter 5, we're reminded to be alert, be self-controlled, because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Just as we've given this token to our veterans this morning as a small gesture of our thanks to them, to honor them for the debt of gratitude that we owe to them. We remind each of us this morning that we too have an, have an armor, that we have a duty, a responsibility to put on. And then to come to Christ with the faith that we have and to serve our God, to serve our Commander-in-Chief in the calling that He has placed on each and every one of our lives. We're not wrestling, Paul has told us, against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against each other. But we are fighting a spiritual battle. And it is that spiritual battle that requires us as followers of Christ to put on the armor that God has given to us. To stand up and to fight for Him. And yes, we have been called to offer the same to Christ just as the veterans who served in our country faithfully offered to our country to give everything to Christ and be willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice, knowing that it is Christ who has given to us the weapons that we need to fight this spiritual battle that is taking place right here in our midst. And so as we've honored our veterans this morning, and as we've said just a small thanks to them in this service today, May we learn from this veteran in Matthew chapter 8 of the faith that it takes to be a veteran in the Lord's army. This uncommon faith in knowing that if Christ has said it, it's already been settled. It's already over. It's already done because it's God's word. And just as we've seen those faithful men who stood before us this morning be willing to give of themselves that's how we have to be willing to give of ourselves to Jesus Christ. This morning, what kind of faith do you have to ask yourself? Do you have? Is it a faith the size of this veteran in Matthew chapter 8? Is it an uncommon faith that is willing to stand up for the things that we know God can do when it seems like the world around us is turning their back and walking away from God? Is it a faith in knowing that God can move mountains? Is it a faith in knowing that all we have to do is ask, seek, and knock, and God will grant it? Or is it a faith that sometimes has doubts? Is it a faith sometimes not sure, unsettled, uneasy in the direction that God has called us? What is your faith? This morning, this morning, I challenge you to learn from this centurion, this veteran in Matthew chapter eight, the faith that he had 
And not just learn from this veteran, but learn from those veterans who stood up here this morning and on display in front of us was just shy of 200 years of faithful service to our country for us and willing to give everything and lay everything on the line for their country at the orders of their commander in chief. What is your faith this morning? Do you take Christ at his word? Have you put on the full armor that God has given to you for the spiritual battle? Or are you just being beat up over and over again by our foe, the enemy, Satan, who is roaring and seeking whoever he can devour? This morning, Christ is here in our presence. And no matter where your faith is, if it's little, or if it's much, or if it's even none, He's here, He loves you, and He has open arms, ready to receive you unto His self. Ready to take the faith that you have, whatever it is, from none to a great faith, and to strengthen that faith to help you grow in your faith, to help you nurture your faith. This morning I challenge you to let these words and these lessons that we've learned here today to increase your faith in Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me this morning? <coughs> Father, we thank you. That because of your word, things have already been settled. I thank you, Lord, that it is you who gives us our commands as your followers. It's you, our commander in chief, who orders us into this spiritual battle that each of us are facing every day. Father, most of all, we thank you that it was you who loved us. We thank you that it was you who gave of yourself before you asked us to give of ourselves in service to you. Father, I just pray today that in these last few moments of this service, that you would teach us the lessons of this veteran, this centurion, Matthew. Teach us the lesson of these veterans who stood in front of us here this morning. How they are willing to sacrifice everything, to walk away from everything that they have and be willing to stand up and fight the battle that was before them. Let us learn those lessons today that we can take and we can apply in our service to you, in our service of your army. Let us be equipped this morning with the armor that you have given to us, the full armor of God. Let us take the tools that you've given to us into battle. Fight the fight that you've given to us. Father, in these few minutes of our service, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to every one of us, every single one of us in this place today. For whatever measure our faith is in you, you would strengthen that faith, and you would grow that faith, that you would show us that your word has already been settled. It doesn't take our belief. It's already over. It's already done with. You've already determined it. And Lord, I just pray that that would strengthen our faith. Lord, thank you for this miracle that you performed here for this centurion servant. Thank you for the miracles that you performed here in this church in the past. Thank you for the things that we prayed for this morning, that we will see miracles be birthed from those things. Thank you, Father. This morning, strengthen our faith, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I just pray today, as we close this service, and as we sing this song, that this song would first be your prayer to God, that you would surrender all to Him. And that in those moments of surrender, you're being willing to do whatever it is that God has asked you to do. That He would strengthen your faith. 
First, if you don't have faith this morning, if you've just been fighting this battle on your own, I challenge you to step out from where you are to come down and kneel at one of these altars and put your faith first and foremost in Jesus Christ. And then allow Him to strengthen the faith that you've put in Him to equip you for the battle that you'll go back out and you'll face. This morning, let's let Christ strengthen all of our faith as we sing this song as a prayer to Him. Oh, to Jesus I surrender Thank you. 